any idea you develop from the idea based on what it has been developed so far. Scientifically, it's a fantastic solution what we have developed, but we have to think from a customer point of view. It varies from you know what kind of uh, content we are looking for. Uh, Dr. Praveen, you have published uh, 60 research papers and uh, about 20 are for patents. Um, so not a small feat to achieve. I'm sure it has taken a lot of hard work and time and a lot of trust from the ecosystem which you have worked with people around. So how do you think this scientific temperament can be brought to the individuals and in turn going to help the society either locally or globally and in turn help the nations to achieve and solve various problems? Well, uh, you just mentioned about like, you know, I publish this many number of papers and all. One, no individual uh, publishes paper. It's always a team of people work together and publish paper. And the papers is not merely number. One shouldn't look for that. But rather, for a scientist or for an academician, uh, these publications are the medium to share your knowledge with the world your findings, what we have discovered. You disseminate that knowledge through this publication to the whole world. Uh, because if you take, and if someone says like, uh, I have a complete developed this idea and I solve this problem, mm, that's not it. Because any problem, any idea, you develop from the idea based on what it has been developed so far, what has been done so far. There is absolutely nothing today that like, you know, you're taking everything from ab initio, there is nothing known you're starting. Uh, that scenario doesn't exist at, at all, right? Because whatever idea you're developing, you're developing from the information what people have worked before and generated that knowledge and just gave that understanding to the field. From there, you're making, you're taking a different thought or you're utilizing that for a different application. How you use that information to make it a little more refinement of that. That's why like you cannot start anything completely new idea. Uh, that thought is no more at all, right? So, but this is the one actually, this thought process should be imparted into students as well. It's, uh, you know, it's absolutely important to share the credit. Think about like, you know, and the process, right? Like uh, how you develop uh, if you were solving a problem or trying to understand a basic phenomena, okay, try to first understand what has been done, what is the information is there. Uh, I'll take like a, one of our own example and explain you like how a problem can be solved based on the research, a large body of the research has been done from others from over the decades, right? So uh, one of our recent focus was to developing technology to protect farmers from pesticide induced toxicity. But even to understand that problem and solving it, like we need to have a lot of background work has been done from decades from other people. For example, these compounds have designed to be neurotoxins, which means like when the pest, when the pest get exposed to it. And these compounds go and particularly deactivate an enzyme, which plays major role in the entire neuronal system. So that's why like when you get exposed, once these enzymes get died and that's how your entire neural system stop working and that's how pests die. And the similar manner, same compounds when they get exposed to human, they have the same lethal effect. That right? same manner they have the toxicity. But uh, this entire very basic fundamental research has been done from several people, pioneering work has been done. Without having that understanding, we could not have come and solve this problem. So what we did is like we build the based on what the knowledge available from there, True. but used for the solving a real life problem. And uh, if coming to the technology, what we developed is, as I mentioned, like, you know, farmers, they don't have any uh, protection when they go and spray pesticide. That's how like it falls on their skin and they inhale. And the, then pesticide, when they go and in induce the toxicity. And one way to protect them is like having this thick uh, plastic sheets they can wear, but like under the tropical conditions, it's impossible for them to adopt those, right? And uh, that's where we thought of developing two classes of technologies. One, a skin gel, which can apply like your regular moisturizer. 
uh, but like these are not physical barrier gel because physically you cannot stop these compounds to go through them so that's why we develop the chemical gels where when any pesticide falls on the skin it's chemically uh, react with the pesticide and breaks down into non harmful products wow. before they entering into the body so in that way like we can completely protect from any pesticide going uh, through the skin and uh, not only that <clears throat> but once we develop the skin then we, uh, we realize that like uh, tomorrow we we should scientifically is a fantastic solution what we have developed but we have to think from a customer point of view, the person who is going to use end user so because the farmer every time uh, applying this cream all over the body every time they go to the field would be like you know uncomfortable for them not everybody might like to do that so that's where we thought we develop a second class of technology where much more user compliance technology so uh, that's where we invented the cloth active cloth because today farmers what they do is like uh, <clears throat> they wear cotton cloth and they also wrap around the towel sandal uh, thinking that it can prevent exposure but unfortunately they increase rather than decrease oh, because this the cotton it just absorbs all the pesticide it falls on it it acts as a more depot and keeps them on the uh, skin to have more exposure right so that's where then what we have developed is we develop this uh, cloth which is chemically modified now this cloth has the ability to any pesticide comes and falls on it it again chemically breaks down all the pesticides so in that way like you, you can wear this like a suit and the mask and any pesticide comes into contact it can be deactivated and this cloth is designed to be like you know reusable suits like you know each suit they can wear for almost a year potentially that's how it designed to be so uh, so this will tell you like you know although this technology got like a lot of recognition from various uh, sectors of the um, scientific and non scientific community uh, my point to emphasize is like uh, what we showed is the uh, finishing line mm. but where we started was we are not the one we started this so there's large body of work has been done there based on that we have developed and this is going to be true for every single problem that has been going to be solved or have been solved already because it's no single player it takes right from the beginning to end i think that's the concept people need to understand and develop things from there yeah i think this is a very wonderful example of talking about relay <coughs> and you you may show that you say that you no know, things start from lab maybe but there's also a lot of work done in terms of theory somebody evolving in ideas about it uh, and then from the lab it goes to and uh, maybe in uh, industry and from industry it goes to the uh, layman hands and the layman uses it and i also like to one of the point which you mentioned about uh, uh, identification of the problem and then giving a solution itself is not a solution because it came with a gel which you felt it could solve a problem but you also know there were challenges with that and you went back to the desk again re reinvented uh, one more solution which is i think very unique and interesting way to look at that we we don't stop uh, finding solution to the problems because there could be a new problems to the solution which you already identified wonderful and very very interesting and uh, thoughtful pro thoughts by you and i would say appreciate uh, the kind of invention done for uh, uh, for the farmers which is a need of our maybe because sometimes the farmers may not be educated to understand these challenges and saving the lives of people is in the, is nothing but you know the kind of inventions we require for the human beings yeah, it is just my curiosity to know it uh, could you dr pramil could you tell to our you know, children who are listening to you that what would be your message on steam education for children and their future I have very simple message i am not sure it's a message or not but like it's just my thoughts like my opinion is doesn't matter which curriculum you take or like uh, which specialization you take whether science or technology arts or anything what you do is like do what you passionate about like what makes you curious about it and do very well with full commitment you can excel in that uh, thank you dr pravin it was nice talking to you and thank for sharing some of the work very valuable information with uh, us and i'm sure people who listen to this uh, will be inspired and uh, looking forward for a career like you set an example for uh, various other people that you started from uh, a small town in uh, telangana and happened to move to a place like harvard and presently you're serving in uh, a, a very interesting place called instem bangalore where you work, you're working as a scientist and trying to save lives of people and make changes to the society system thank you very much once again thank you so much for having me wonderful talking to you
Thank you.